I'm really interested in the process and the journey of how you went from losing yourself into regaining who you are, which eventually led down to this current moment across the screen. Yeah, and it's an interesting story because within that, there was multiple losing myself. And I'm going to continue that because there was a point recently last year where I lost myself at a very high point. But let's start with the low point. You know, my father passed away when I was 16 from a very rare heart disease called giant cell myocarditis. I think it's so rare that there's less than like 100 cases. I don't know if that's just in general or each year. It's extremely rare. Like there's not a lot of research on this disease. And it usually doesn't happen to someone who's in their early 50s. It usually happens to like young athletes. So I remember coming back from two weeks of swimming and dive camp and just seeing him very pale and then him going to the hospital and him telling me that his heart went from an eight cylinder to a two cylinder. And now in my mind, I would say I was very naive. I was like, oh, you know, everything's going to be fine. I'd never had the thought of I'm never going to see my father again. And through that, he had a biopsy. He kind of died right there. But then they sent him to Penn Hospital. He was on a machine. And then I visited him for, I want to say, at least a month while he was on the machine. And I remember not really seeing him for a week just because it was the kind of the same stuff. And I think it was hard for me. I went to three different concerts. And during this time, I was, you know, smoking a lot of weed and doing a lot of other drugs, Molly, and just trying to get away from the, these feelings. And then I remember coming back from that three day concert thing and he passed away and I didn't get to see him. And that's when you could say destiny wrote itself for me. And I lost myself in this very deep depression that didn't really get out of until I actually took some medication. So it was really bad. I swam my entire life. It was a senior year. I became the captain because I was on the swim team most in that, you know, longer than anyone else that was a senior. And I quit after I became captain. I didn't really like swim meets. I didn't like competition. I had a severe anxiety with performance. And I think that pressure caused me to just say, nope, can't do it. I don't want to do it. I hate it. I'm done. And that was really strange for a lot of people. Strange for my grandma who drove me to practice every single day and everyone else that knew me. So I did take medication. I think that did help. It wasn't a lot. It was just like uh, basically Prozac. And then I got into a relationship who was someone who was kind of this, uh, say, high school sweetheart type of thing. So through that, I lost myself completely. I was still smoking weed. I was still selling. Uh, I got held at gunpoint twice. I kept getting robbed within those like kind of two years of my dad passing and then junior and senior year. So more bad stuff was happening. And I thought God hated me. I hated God. I was like, I, I don't know what's going on. It keeps bad stuff keeps happening to me. When will I get a break? And that's what it felt like. Hopelessness, legit hopelessness. Even to a point, I thought I had schizophrenia because I was like just way too up in my head. Um, I didn't, I don't. <laughs> so I lost myself and I found myself within a relationship. But really what I was doing was I was identifying myself within another person. This person became a savior, a victim, me, a victim found a savior who I felt attracted to. I felt loved. I felt seen. I felt heard. And in my mind, I was like, oh, well, God takes one thing away and gives you something else. And to me, that was that person. God took my father away and brought this person. And that's how deeply I was ingrained in that. And she loved me as too. It was this whole love story, this whole thing that was in my head. We met freshman year. It was crazy how we even met. And it was just like, wow, how did this happen? And through that, it was a four and a half year long relationship. There was multiple times where I was trying to find myself as well. But this person had a track. She was going to med school. She was valedictorian. Complete opposites. If you saw us on paper, you would have been like, how is, how is Oliver dating this person? This is really weird. But it worked. It almost like was like a puzzle piece. Like her, and her differences with my differences kind of fit together. And through that, 
because I think this is really important in terms of relationships, because relationships will bring up any trauma you have, because trauma is based on your first relationships, which is with your parents. When you get into a relationship, that comes up. So a lot of that stuff came up, a lot of toxic traits that I wasn't aware of, a lot of things I wasn't aware of just came up. And through that, after four and a half years, we broke up right after I graduated. And so that was another time where I completely lost myself, almost worse because I think I was older and I went through so much experience and I identified so much with the savior. Right? I thought this was my soulmate. I was you know, thinking of like kids' names, of like when we're going to get married and all this stuff. And then it just pff, left. Graduated college, moved in with my grandmom so I could save money and be around her. She's 95 right now. So it kind of made sense. And then we broke up. And I don't have a lot of friends where I was staying. And that's when that depression came back. Now, the pre depression came back while I was in the relationship because of college and exploring that. But when I went through that breakup, I lost myself again. I didn't know who I was because I identified so much with this relationship that codependency just cracked. And I was, I remember this feeling of having to drive to work and do personal training and wake up at like 5 a.m. and just kind of hating my life. And just being so confused of like, what is going on? What is happening? What do I do? Where is this going? And for a very long time, I tried to get that relationship back. So for anyone who's gone through a breakup and they desperately try to get that person back. I was there and I was probably the weird one. <laughs> like really, really trying to get it back. And that just kind of increased that depression for longer and longer. But through that, I met new people. I went on new adventures. I was exploring myself. I was aligning myself with people that I actually felt aligned with, not just friends from high school that we would just drink and smoke and do whatever, but people who actually cared about personal development people who cared about mind, body, spirit, people who were doing the same thing as me, who were curious and exploring. And that's always who I was. I always wanted to create stuff with friends and not just, you know, play Super Smash, even though I love Super Smash. <laughs> um, and that's, that's something where the breakup was a perfect opportunity for me to discover myself. So that was the end of uh, the summer of 2018. And from that point on, I started really healing. Because for me, I just went through all the scenarios. I was like, how could I have done better? How could have I showed up as a man more? How could have I showed up in that relationship for this person more? And so I was reading and just, you know, being curious of myself and just kept looking at all these things. And it's funny because you do that and you realize what you did wrong. And then you try to get this person back. And you're like, look, I get it. I know exactly what I did wrong. And I know exactly what to do now. And it doesn't work that way. It usually never works that way. So I also had to deal with that loss, which was a second grieving. And then also understand, you know, more of me. And that's where I was, I was doing personal training. The whole thing with the marketing agency kind of fell through because I was like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> I don't like doing Facebook ads. I like helping people. I want to help people. And my core belief is everything happens for a reason. I developed that in a mindfulness class in college. And then that extended to it is your perspective that creates that reason. And before that perspective was, I'm hopeless, you know, God hates me to this happened to me for a reason. And I believe it is for me to help people to be on this earth, to create some type of change in other people's lives, because why else would that happen to me? And I think this morphed into also accepting that it just is, it just did happen. And I can choose exactly the meaning behind it happening.